Hi, Graham Vincent, violin maker and musician, or should I say viola maker? Gosh, uh, yeah. So uh, this is the second part of the viola build. Uh, I can't remember what I did in the first part. I must have not. I haven't watched that since I put it together. Uh, so let me just have a quick recap of where we are. I mean, basically, um, where we stand at the moment is the the rough blocks have gone onto the internal mould. Uh, I made the internal mould. Um, by basically using a bit of old kitchen worktop, uh, beach kitchen worktop, and I used the PDF file, um, which I'd done on DraftSite, which is an AutoCAD equivalent, uh, imported it onto my geriatric um, laptop onto Lightburn, and then using my modified LX Macca, I, I then sort of directly, sort of um, directly engrave, engrave the mold outline onto the actual piece of timber itself. Um, then it went all sort of manual and it was over to the bandsaw and sander and what have you to actually sort of uh, to get it more or less right. So situation at the moment basically mould with blocks on it, um, a pile of timber and other templates and things here. So that's the the pear wood. This is the See, and here we have the um, finished and prepared ribs. I've, I've actually, I think I've done enough for two violas there. And the way I'm going to do it is just using a bending iron. But actually, I will kind of immerse the, uh, the really tight bits into hot water as I go. Um, I obviously haven't shaped the blocks on the form yet so I will actually just be doing this and offering it up to the to the template this is the inner line of the ribs um, so hopefully by the end of this session I heard should have a pile of six bent ribs um, which I will make slightly over I'll exaggerate all the curves so it's a bit that, that they can afford to relax a little bit um, if that makes sense does that make sense hopefully so um, I'm going to put this onto, um, I think, onto a, uh, what they call it, time lapse and just leave it running and um, we'll see where we go. Oh, let me, before I go, um, yeah, so that's um, this here. Should I say it? I'm, I'm pointing at the screen because I can see it on the screen. Dear, oh dear, what an empty. This is a fish kettle which obviously is long enough to take ribs really happily. So if I'm going to steam anything or any bits of wood or what have you, that's what I tend to use. So there we go. Um, one thing I haven't had recently is a cup of coffee. So I might just actually have a little break before I set the time lapse doing. And um, when I reappear again, you should be seeing a slightly more contented looking and satiated version of me possibly holding a cup of coffee. So onwards and upwards. Right, so I've bent all the, the sides up. I will, um, I mean, they will kind of relax a little bit over the next sort of 24 hours. And so I will probably have the bending iron sort of running and just tweak them a little bit when it comes to actually sort of fitting them, uh, just to make sure that they're, they're, they're absolutely spot on. But it's a, it's, a, it's a very fast and good start to the operation anyway. So what am I going to do now? Let me think. I'm now going to, I think, prepare the fronts and bring the edge down to just over four mil. That's what I'm going to do now. No, I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the timber for the front and back and ribs of the, uh, of the guitar shape violin I'm making.
Well, I did the uh, the ribs in the Spanish cedar, but I picked um, a particular piece, which I look, really like the look of, but I think it was too short grained. And um, I mean, it's really ridiculously fragile, that bit. So I'm now slightly worried about that. I'll cut another piece out from a different piece of the board. Well, a different board, in fact and paying more attention to the actual grain structure rather than its nice appearance. And and uh, hopefully it'll be stronger than that. If that if that's not the case, if it isn't any stronger, then I'm gonna have to reevaluate the whole approach with the Spanish cedar, I think. So it's a slight worry at the moment. Oh, the tune is the star above the garter. So I've got to cut, um... I've got to cut some timber for the for the new for the replacement rib. So whilst I'm at it, I'll cut out enough for another violin as well. Actually, Anyway, this video is sort of stretching on and on, so I, I better kind of wrap it up. But to, I'll give you a brief summary of where we are. So, I mean, um, a day has passed since the last bit of filming. Um, so I've got the rib garland together on the on the viola mould. I have to say, the um, that sort of pre-bending that I did, I was expecting to have to sort of go and, and just tweak the sides, uh, the ribs a little bit. But in fact, I'd got them <laughs> because I'd allowed... I'd, I'd kind of guesstimated an amount that they would relax uh, and I wasn't far off. Um, so in fact, they more or less just popped straight in. So it was a really very simple process. So yeah, um, with the viola, I mean, effectively rib garland's done. Um, I've just got to um, trim these sides down to height. I'll then um, get the uh, get the linings in. Um, I've got the, the timber for the, for the fronts and the backs all set. Uh, so, I will sort of start work carving fairly soon. On the, um, I mean, it did get a bit messy, this video, because I kind of included a little bit of what I was doing on the guitar-shaped violin as well. Um, yeah, so there was a, a bit of an issue there in as, I'd, in as much as I'd, I'd selected some Spanish cedar from uh, the old stock that I had from the old bureau, purely based on how it looked and there was quite a lot of short grain in it. So when I actually started playing around bending the ribs, it became quite obvious fairly quickly that the, there was, it was too short grain and it was too, too brittle. It wasn't strong enough. So I, I, um, I selected a whole load more, uh, machined them up um, from a piece uh, which was much straighter grained. In fact, that piece is the same board that the that the ribs for the one I made previously came from, so I'm completely confident that that's fine. Um, whilst I was at it, because I ended up cutting so much wood for ribs, um, there's enough there for, I don't know, who knows how many violins, several, at least, at least three violins. So I, I kind of, um, I also, at the same time, I set to and uh sawed up fronts and backs for three violins as well i'm I'm only going to make one i think on this occasion uh but I'll, I'll have the other you know on the shelf ready to go if i if i need to um so so that's it really the what else has been happening the um the violin i'm repairing for myself is kind of just sat there with nothing happening that's the that's the mold for the guitar shape one um that's the the viola neck um where is it uh, with it's uh, and also with enough as i said enough spare spare ribs to make another another viola as well um but the big thing that i'm going to be doing now is uh everything else is coming off the bench and I'm going to finish these two chestnut violins today and tomorrow. And then hopefully they'll be in the post off to the States. Uh, where are we now? It's Tuesday today. So I would hope 
Thursday morning they'll be they'll be dispatched um, because yeah they've all settled in everything's lovely so I shall um, just tune them up and get everything going so here we go right that's it um, yeah um, catch up soon look ourselves cheers folks bye